Hello everyone, this is Pastor Ethan Horton from the Tampico Baptist Church. We're going to be putting on another sermon here. Now before all this began with the coronavirus, we were doing an in-depth look at the fruits of the Spirit. Those things that ourselves and others are to be seen if we are living like a Christian. The fruits that we are to be producing if we are living the life that Christ has called us to live. And we are on the fourth week of this study. Now the first fruit that we looked at was love. We looked at how we were to love our neighbors ourselves, and how above all else we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. Because it is that which enables us to produce all the other spiritual fruits. We have looked at joy and how as a Christian we are never without our source of joy, for while worldly joy comes from temporary things that can change or disappear in an instant, a Christian's joy comes from Christ and what he did for us on the cross. How Christ is always with us no matter what happens, and that we will one day be spending eternity with him in paradise. And then last week we were together, we looked at peace, and how we can do little things to help make our physical lives and our relationships more peaceful. But as we are ultimately have no control over anything, and there will be things that will make it seemingly impossible to find peace in our lives, such as the coronavirus that's going on right now, the best way we're going to be able to find peace in the middle of the storm is by relying upon Christ and strengthening our relationship with Him through prayer and through the studying of scriptures. To begin today, let's open our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, the fourth fruit of the Spirit, which is what we're going to be looking at today, is long-suffering, more commonly known as patience. Everybody loves patience, except for when they have to be patient. With the instant society that we have come to live in, it is becoming harder and harder to learn patience all the time. It used to be that people had to wait for things, even if that was only 10 or 15 minutes. Nowadays, everything is about speed. Our food, our devices, our shopping, our transportation. Literally, everything is about speed. How fast we can get it done and move on to the next thing on our agenda. It's even to the point where we are willing to sacrifice quality for the sake of speed. Of just getting it done so we can move on to the next thing that we have planned. And we grow frustrated when it is not going as quickly as we would like it to. One of the things I'm least patient with and grow frustrated with rather quickly is anything to do with technology of any sort. When you're doing something that in your head will take you about five minutes tops and then you get started and that circle won't stop spinning and nothing is happening and it's refusing to load and all of a sudden that five minute thing that you're going to do real quick turns into a five hour project. That drives me nuts and pushes my past, pushes me past my ability to be patient with technology. Something that is testing a lot of people right now is the coronavirus and having to put everything off that they have been wanting to do. Canceling events, making us all put our lives on hold. It can be making us feel impatient and frustrated, pushing us past our limit of patience even. But patience is one of the most important things we can learn though. It will help us to be a happier person through these difficult times and to become an overall better Christian even though it is so important for us to learn it and there are immense benefits from having an abundance of patience it is one of the most dreaded things for us to have to learn in our entire lives lots of people recognize the importance of patience but few want to exhibit it on any given day let's take a look at a couple of verses that really stress the importance of having patience and point out a couple of things that particularly stem from and make up patience Let's turn in our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we're going to be reading verses 8 and 9. It says, Better is the end of a thing than beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. This verse points out three different aspects on why having patience is so important. First, it says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. 
when we begin something new, it is oftentimes interesting, fun, and exciting. At this point, there isn't much to it, though. If it is, say, baking something, such as cream puffs, when you start, you get out the basic ingredients of flour, salt, eggs, and a couple other things. And Though you have the stuff that makes up the cream puff, it does not taste as good as the cream puff. Then through much stirring and waiting and stirring, then waiting, then baking and waiting for it to bake, then more waiting this time for them to cool, and then filling them and yet more waiting for them to chill and set up. So that four or five hours later, you have the finished product, the finished cream puff. The end result is a delicious food. You end up with something far better than what you started with. If any, at any given point you decide to quit and walk away or to stop and to eat it, you'd have just ended up with a mess and something that didn't taste as good as it could have. Patience is a key ingredient in anything you cook if you really want to make it something worth eating. And likewise, patience is a key ingredient in anything we do if we want it to be worth doing. The things that make up and come from this part of patience is commitment and determination. Being willing to stick to something all the way through to the end. To see what we started to the very finish. This is a very important thing that we need to be able to learn in our lives and to apply on a daily basis. The second thing that is stressed in this verse about patience is found where it says, The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. What this is talking about is how a patient spirit is the exact opposite of a proud spirit. When we are patient, we are willing to take the time we need to do something right, even if it requires us to take time and learn how to do it, and ask advice from someone else in order to do it the best way it could be done. Whereas if we are filled with pride, we will do it our way, no matter if it's the right way or not. We will even try to forcefully do it when we don't know how to do it and potentially break something in the process which will keep us from being able to finish what we had set out to do, possibly even harming ourselves or others. Or at the very least, incur additional expenses of time and money. For example, if I were, say, to be working on my car, that's, say, the brakes, and I didn't really know what I was doing, if I tried to force a bowl and I ended up rounding it off or breaking it because I didn't know the right way to turn it or the size of the bolt it was, then I cost myself time and money. And if I continued on with it and reached the point where I think I had done it right even though I hadn't, then when I drive my car and try to stop, I suddenly realize I didn't do it right and now I don't have any brakes. I could end up hurting or killing myself and or others. If I take the time instead to read my Haynes manual and talk to my dad or my brother Riley, even asking them for help and to show me what to do if need be, I could be sure of what to do and do it right and have my brakes when I try to stop and not run the risk of harming myself or others. Patience is critical to safety in such things as well as to providing us with an easier pathway to getting it done right. The things that make up and stem from this part of patience is humbleness, wisdom, and caution. See, when we are cautious, we are careful when we are in unfamiliar territory, and we don't take unnecessary risks when we are doing something, keeping us from breaking or damaging something or hurting ourselves or someone else. Simply being cautious, though, is not good enough. For if we are too cautious and allow something to intimidate us, it will keep us from moving forward in life. We have to follow that cautiousness up with the commitment and determination that is also a part of patience like aforementioned. And then follow that up with the next part of patience, which is humbleness. If we are humble, we are willing to look for what we need to know before we proceed on with what we are doing, even if that requires us to ask help or advice from someone else in order to be able to do it. We are then able to accomplish what we had set out to do, and to do it well, while at the same time being able to glean wisdom from our own experiences and the help and advice from others that we asked for along the way. Pride keeps us from doing all that. It causes us to take unnecessary risks. It keeps us from accomplishing our goals successfully and from gaining much needed wisdom from others along the way. The third thing about patience in these verses is the entirety of verse 9, and that is self-control. In this verse it says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. What this is telling us is that we are not to allow ourselves to, become, to lose control of our temper. 
When we lose control of our temper, we say and do rash things that if we had controlled our temper, would have never we would never have said or done. Things that we will very likely regret later, after the damage is already done. The self-control that comes from and makes up being patient cannot be overrated, for the benefits are immense. Our temper can destroy all the fruits of the Spirit we have looked at thus far. It will keep us from loving our neighbor as ourselves. It will keep us from loving God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. It will keep us from being able to find joy and peace in our lives. And it can hinder other people from doing and finding those things as well. When we lose our temper, we damage or destroy what we are working on. We can damage and destroy our relationships with other people. It can damage and destroy our testimony, making us an ineffective witness for the gospel. When we are faced with something that just grates against us, or someone that is doing their level best to get under their skin, or working with something and everything that could go wrong is going wrong, if we remain patient and keep control of our temper, then we'll be able to get along with the most difficult of people and overcome the most difficult of problems. And we'll be able to use these things as a gateway to reach out to other people with the gospel message. Now that we have looked at why patience is so important, for many different reasons. And what makes up and stems from it, let's look at how we gain it. Let's flip over in our Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, and starting in verse 3. Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 3. It says, not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now the best, most common way patience is learned is through the needing it. It is through putting it into practice that we have, we have it. It is easier said than done. For nobody wants to be patient. It goes against our human nature to want to have to wait for something, no matter what it is. Nobody is born with an extreme amount of patience. It has to be learned by being put into practice. It has to be done willingly, though. We cannot be impatiently fighting at every step of the way and expect to learn patience. We have to make the conscious decision to wait and fight the urge to try and force something that isn't working in order to learn patience. It is through this gradual process that we gain more and more patience, so that we learn from our experience to remain hopeful in the Lord and not allow tribulations to drag us away from Him, because we know that He is in control, that He is with, with us, and through Him anything is possible, no matter how bleak the situation may seem. Patience is so important to learn because God does not work on our time. God works on his own time, knowing when it is the right time for something to happen. That often goes completely against what we would desire to happen. We will in our lives feel like God is calling us to do something, and when we are feeling that, we want to dive right into it, immersing ourselves completely in it. Sometimes that is exactly what we need to do. Other times we find that the doors that we thought would be open for us are all of a sudden shut at that time. This can cause us to become frustrated and make us want to give up on it and quit. Or we'll continue and try to force something that isn't meant to happen at this time or at all. Because we're going at it the wrong way. We need to be patient at those times and not allow ourselves to become discouraged by it. It's a mindset that we need to have. And train ourselves in. We could allow ourselves to become frustrated with it and give up thinking that this wasn't his plan after all and leave it behind us never to look back again, missing out on something extraordinary that God had planned for us. Or we can think, okay, not yet, now is not the right time, but it's going to come and we can anticipate it. Being impatient and being patient and waiting on the Lord's time for something doesn't mean that we're supposed to sit there twiddling our thumbs and doing nothing. Nothing is ever gained or learned by doing that. Instead, we need to spend that time we are waiting on the Lord's time for us to do what we are feeling called to do. We need to be spending that time wisely. We need to be spending it researching, studying it, preparing our hearts for what is to come. Doing things that seem to be minor that the Lord gives us to do because it could be something that He is using to prepare us and give us the experience and wisdom we need to have 
to do what he is calling us to do. Even if we don't see how that could be when we are doing those seemingly minor things. So that way when the time comes and the doors open for us to do it, then we're prepared for it and we're able to do a better job than had those doors been opened right away. That could very well be the reason why the time isn't right yet. It could be that we are not yet prepared for, to do what he, he may be calling us to do. And God wants us to prepare be ourselves better for it so that we will be able to do it to the best of our ability, to do the best job we could possibly do. Without patience, we will miss out on the opportunities and jobs that God has for us. It helps us to overcome the challenges that we'll face in life and most of all the challenges that will come in direct service to Him. When we run into wall after wall of opposition, we'll keep on trying and waiting on the Lord's time. We'll be able to keep our joy through all tribulations, for we know this is all temporary and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And we'll never stop trying to serve the Lord and share the good news of the gospel with people. We'll have people in our lives who we care deeply about and we care about their spiritual state. These people, if they refuse our attempts to share the gospel with them, can be rather frustrating for us. It can intimidate us from trying to reach them with the gospel again, which can cause us to remain silent when the next opportunity to reach out to them with the gospel arises. We can't allow that to happen, for the consequences of that is, are far too great. We need to remain patient and not allow fear or even anger to overwhelm us, but instead we need to remain calm and patient, being determined to share the gospel whenever the opportunity arises. The amount of patience that we have and our ability to actually apply it in our lives, even when we don't want to, affects every part of our lives, every single aspect, both the physical and the spiritual. We need to be making the decision every time something comes up that makes us rush ahead or lose control of our emotions or cause us to want to give up. We need to make the decision to remain calm and to wait on the Lord's perfect time, to be compassionate and take time to talk to people and help them even if it means we have to sacrifice of ourselves to do so, to be determined and never give up on a person the Lord has placed in our life to witness to or on anything else the Lord has called us to do in our lives. And when we have to wait for a while before we do something the Lord is calling us to do, we need to use that time wisely to better prepare ourselves for when that day comes so that we'll be equipped to accomplish it. Right now, we have the perfect opportunity to train and equip and prepare ourselves for whatever may come next. Most of us have more free time than we have had in years, maybe ever. Let's all make sure that we're using this free time wisely, remaining calm and patient, focusing on things that are truly important, and bettering our relationship with Christ so that we can be the best witnesses for Christ that we can be during these difficult times and afterwards. In closing today, we're going to look at one last verse that talks about the importance of being patient and why we need to wait upon the Lord and the benefits that come from doing so. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And it reads, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Let us close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day and this wonderful weather you have blessed us with. Lord, I th pray that you would help us to wait on your time, to help us to remain calm, and to, at the same time, be determined to do what you have called us to do. I pray, Lord, that you help us to be cautious but not scared. Lord, I pray that you would help us to apply all the aspects of patience. That you would help us to wait through these difficult times that are going around us. Not to grow impatient, but use this time that you have given us wisely to learn and to study on what you need us to be learning and studying upon so we can be the best witness for you, the best servant of Christ that we can be. Lord, I pray for wisdom for our leaders, that they would know how to handle this situation. Lord, I pray that you protect those in the medical field. Lord, I pray that you'd protect us and our loved ones from getting this illness. And Lord, 